Of all the sons of Chinggis Khan, none have elicited such sympathy among both medieval and modern writers as Juchi, his eldest son and the only one to predecease him. In this video, we will discuss Juchi's final years and present the circumstances around his death and the assertions that Chinggis Khan had him poisoned. Perhaps the most famous story from Temujin's youth was the capture of his wife Borte by Merkitz. Upon her rescue, she was found to be pregnant or have already given birth to a boy named Juchi, meaning guest. The uncertain circumstances around his birth, whether he was the son of Temujin or a Merkit, left a haze on Juchi's legitimacy. Chinggis, to his credit, treated Juchi as fully legitimate, giving him command of armies and the matter of Juchi's uncertain paternity only really came to a head when it was time to settle who would succeed Chinggis, either just before the Horezmian invasion or in stages over the following years, Juchi's brother Chagatai revealed a virulent animosity towards Juchi, refusing to allow a market bastard to succeed their father. It was apparent that choosing Juchi or Chagatai would result in civil strife between the brothers, and the third son, Ergadai, was chosen as a compromise. Previously, we have discussed in detail the siege of the Horezmian capital of Jurgenj in 1221, Juchi's final time as apparent leader among the brothers, a long and difficult siege. The poor performance and conflict between Juchi and Chagatai in the siege likely served to further emphasize and demonstrate that neither would be able to lead the brothers. After the fall of the city in summer 1221, Juchi moved onto the Kiptrak Steppe, territory granted to him by Chinggis, where his task was to further subjugate the Kiptrak peoples. The final years of Juchi's life diverge quite substantially in the sources, and we will present the main depictions. The first version of the story we will discuss comes to us from the Persian writer Juvaini, writing in the 1250s and worked in the Mongol administration. In Juvaini's account, Juchi spent the years after Jurgenj on the steppe, until he received a messenger from Chinggis sometime in 1223, requesting his presence, ordering him to meet him at Hulanbashi. Chinggis was proceeding to Mongolia after the destruction of the Horezmian Empire. His next target, the Jin Dynasty or Tangut Kingdom. Progress was leisurely before reaching the Fanakat River and holding a Hurultai there. After this, they reached Hulanbashi, where Juchi arrived in spectacular fashion, driving a thousand grey horses as gift for his father and vast herds of wild asses before him, on which the Mongols partook a great hunt. Juvaini provides little detail on this meeting, only that a number of Uyghur nobles were executed before Chinggis departed again, Juchi leaving to his own Ordu rather than accompany his father. But not long after his return, Juchi died of undisclosed reasons sometime in 1225. We may assume that the succession matter, if not already done so, was finalized by this meeting, despite the large gift of horses provided by Juchi. If true, perhaps the resulting depression from realizing he was truly excluded from the succession spiraled into alcoholism, illness, and ultimately an early death. There is another version of the story, however, repeated by Juzjani, but in fullest detail by the great Ilkhanid vizier Rashid al-Din. Rashid al-Din's version starts off much the same, with Juchi heading to the Kiptrak steppe after the destruction of Jurgenj. But now, he ignores his father's summons multiple times, claiming illness, Chinggis becoming more annoyed each time. An individual of the Manghut people passes through Juchi's camp where Juchi was seemingly organizing a hunt. However, Juchi was in reality too ill to accompany them, and was merely sending off his men to do so for him. When the man reached Chinggis Han, and Chinggis asked about Juchi's illness, the man told the Han that he knew nothing about any illness, but had seen Juchi hunting. Chinggis erupted into anger, his son was ignoring his summons, disobeying his orders, effectively treason. In a rage, Chinggis raised his armies, Chagatai and Ergadai placed in the vanguard. 
But before the army could get far, news arrived that Juchi had died of illness. Chingus was horrified and after an inquiry learned the lies of the Mangut individual. Efforts were made to find and punish him, but he could not be located. Chingus did not take his armies against Juchi's Ulus, left his territory intact and allowed Juchi's son Batu to succeed him. Juzjani's account, written in the Delhi Sultanate around the same time as Juvani, has a similar course. In his version, after the fall of Jurgens, Juchi and Chagatai enter the Kiptrak steppe to subdue the Kiptrak. And there, Juchi falls in love with the territory. Juchi became repulsed at the violence caused by his father, and decided to enter into an alliance with the Horizm Shah and kill Chinggis Khan. Chagatai learns of this, however, and informs Chinggis, who dispatches assassins to poison Juchi. It should be noted that Juzjani despised Chinggis and Chagatai, but had rather kinder things to say on Juchi. Juzjani hated Chinggis so much that a rumor of him killing his own son must have seemed rather easy to believe. That Juchi also hated the destruction seems to have contributed to Juchi's modern depiction as the gentlest, for lack of a better word, of Chinggis's sons. Finally, we have a version which comes to us from our friends in Kazakhstan. In Kazakh legends, Juchi meets his end on a hunting accident, falling from his horse while hunting wild asses. In the resulting confusion, Juchi's right hand is ripped off and his skull crushed. Right on the site of his death, his family is supposed to have built a mausoleum for him, which still stands today in Kazakhstan. According to rumors, the mausoleum was excavated in the 1940s and was found to contain a single individual missing his right hand and showing extensive skull damage. Apparently, there is also a brick on the building which dates it to 1227. Despite my efforts, however, I haven't been able to verify this. The building certainly exists and looks to be a piece of architecture from the Golden Horde, but nothing I have seen so far can concretely connect it to Juchi or shed much light on this supposed Soviet excavation. It's just as likely a tomb built for one of his descendants in the following century, which through popular tradition turned to that of Juchi himself. However, if you have information on this, I would love to hear it, so please do share in the comments. While the details differ, one thing shows up again and again. In Juchi's final years, there was a falling out between him and his father, possibly connected to the poor conduct of the Siege of Jurgenj, his fight with Chagatai, and ultimate loss of his chance to succeed Chinggis. Juchi's uncertain paternity ensured a rift between him and his brothers, compounded by disagreements with his father, which came to a head when it came to settle the matter of succession. So severe was this that none of his descendants, even the powerful Batu, were even considered for the position of Great Han. While I don't believe Chinggis poisoned Juchi or tried to bring an army against him, it seems there was some manner of resistance from Juchi in his final months, perhaps intentional or due to illness. Writers like Juzjani who hated the Mongols may have enjoyed that Chinggis' final years were spoiled by fighting with Juchi that the conqueror of the world may not have been the father of his own eldest child. Certainly, we could expect rumors to form quickly around the most powerful family in Asia, especially when two of them, Juchi and then the Great Han himself, died in such quick succession. Soon we will cover the death of Chinggis Han, but in our next video in this series we will look at his return to the Tangut Kingdom and the destruction of that state, Chinggis Han's great bloody swan song.